Taoiseach, there's been considerable controversy in the last few days about the appointment of Joe O'Toole to the Water Commission, uh, but I want to start by thanking Joe O'Toole for shining a light on the real objectives of the Commission on Water. His honesty in telling it like it is is very useful to those of us who marched and uh, opposed the water and vote and for the people who voted the majority of TDs in this house to oppose water because Joe O'Toole has declared already that central taxation is not enough to pay for water, that revenue should be used to collect the levies, people take note. Uh, he says it's a political exercise, a democratic exercise, that people vote in a certain way and we have to find enough sugar to make the medicine go down. Um, so Joe O'Toole has really unpicked what this commission is all about for us. Uh, but it's really the other members of the commission that I'd like to draw your attention to, Taoiseach, and ask you what method was used to appoint these people. Uh, for example, Peter Peacock, who's the chair of the Customer Forum for Water Scotland, and he uh, favours charges and boasts that customer forums can help to lower prices. And yet water charges and wastewater charges in Scotland are at a handsome 470 17 British pounds uh, per annum. Um, Bill Emery, a former director of Ofwas, the British energy regulator, presided over privatised water system, an associate of a company that helps public agencies deal with big business and lists 22 water companies among its clients. Um, I hope I'm saying the man's right na name. Xavier Leflail of the OECD, who steers water policy in uh, selected countries in South America, such as Brazil. To quote Thames Water, one of the biggest globalised water companies in the world, on the question of Brazil, it has one of the world's largest concentration of water and wastewater privatisation opportunities. And despite two decades of water charging and privatisation, in South America more than 130 million people still have no access to safe, clean drinking water and only one in six enjoy safe and adequate sanitation. So the Commission based on the selection, will be a complete sham. There isn't a single representative from the largest social movement in the history of the state. There isn't a single representative of the trade union movement. The remit excludes any social implication of funding water services in the short, medium or long term, and that includes water poverty, future privatisation or potential shut-offs. And if you look at, for example, a city like Detroit, all of the above have plagued that city and the people of that city are now landed with a terrible debt as a result of it and a complete scarcity of water. So the outcome of this commission, I want to thank Joe O'Toole again, is about to be predictable. There's charges with sweeteners for those who are in seat of social welfare living in poverty and there will be a form of a company that will allow privatisation by the back door. But people out there note we are having a major protest in this city on the 17th of September to oppose this totally undemocratic commission and the bullying of the EU on the question of water. Thank you, Deputy Smith. Taoiseach. Well, thank you for the notice about the protest. Um, I, I, I would say to you, uh, Deputy Smith, this is, one of the most, uh, this is one of the most important developments in the country in so many years because of years and years of neglect, the Irish water system and the Irish wastewater system has been woefully inadequate. The city where you live has been on a knife edge in terms of capacity for clean water for many years. And that situation will not improve without the advent of Irish water being able to invest and invest seriously in improving, um, in, in, in improving capacity to supply water, capacity to supply clean water in huge volumes and deal with the extent of leakage that has gone on for, for 100 years in many cases. They've invested over 400 million uh, since uh, 2015, which was an increase of... Uh, of 37% uh, on the estimated 300 million that was uh, spent in 2013. And since, 20, since January 2014, Irish Water have built 20 new water treatment plants, new and upgraded, 49 new wastewater treatment plants, new and upgraded. If you live in any of those areas and understand the improvement and the quality of life, uh, that comes about as a consequence of that, you'll understand uh, why Irish Water has made such improvements. That's why the, the Cork Lower Harbour project, which is a 90 million project, is actually underway. Now, I know that Joe O'Toole 
uh, has been a public servant who has done a great deal of work over many years involved in public life um, and has uh, said that he, he wants to be an impartial chairman and that he, he knows more than anybody else that there has to be public and, and, um, and political confidence in the, um, in, the, um, in the integrity of the process that has been set out. But the, the people that you mentioned, the trade unionists and ordinary citizens and everybody else, of course have their opportunity. But the, the issue here was to have an expert advisory group to advise uh, in respect of Irish water, how it should do its business, uh, the standards that should be set, uh, the trends that they should follow, in order to provide people in Ireland here, business people and ordinary citizens with clean water, proper wastewater treatment plants, and at the same time provide an opportunity for continued investments, for jobs, for people, so that they can have, have a life to live and contribute to our society. Um, so I know you have a very different view than me in terms of Irish water. But in the while that it's been in operation, yes, with, uh, with many difficulties in the beginning, it's made very significant improvements uh, through town and country, and its programme of investment uh, over the coming years will, uh, will continue that kind of development, Deputy Smith. Taoiseach, Deputy Smith. Yeah, well, Taoiseach, um, I don't know if you're doing a Mary Poppins on this, but you're certainly not answering my question. What I asked you was about the structure and the formation of the Commission, and those I listed who were appointed to it, I'm objecting to them on behalf of many people because they are not impartial and they are in fact partial towards a little bit of privatisation and a lot of charges. So my question is about the structure and the composition of the Commission itself, including the non-partial Joe O'Toole who's going into it to chair it with his own set views on it. Now I know of some citizens who applied to be uh, considered for this Commission, some citizens with considerable expertise in uh, environment, in waste management, in water management management and they haven't even been given the uh, respect or the decency of an explanation as to why their applications failed or why they wouldn't be considered suitable for a commission which is loaded with academics and with people from outside the jurisdiction who are unelected and not representative of the people in this country who voted en masse, marched en masse, protest en marche, boycotted en masse, to have a different sort of water services, one that is publicly funded through progressive central taxation and one that they have some decision making over. We're getting a commission that's already made up its mind that it's going to give us more of the Thank same. You, I'm Smith. asking you, how do you decide the construct of such a commission, who gets to say that these doctors from outside the jurisdiction who are totally pro-privatisation can sit on this commission and that Joe O'Toole, who's made up his mind already, can be an impartial chairperson? Well, these are people of, uh, of particular abilities and experience that have a lot to offer in terms of the expert group that is being set up here. Uh, everybody has a view. Everybody can have a proposition. Everybody can have a, uh, can have their can have their their, their say uh, about what should be done. But what has to be done, Deputy Smith, is to continue to invest in pro provision of capacity to deliver clean water for people, volumes of water for business, and wastewater treatment uh, plants around the country. You can't continue beyond 2016 with 60 or 80 wastewater. Uh, plants that are woefully inadequate uh, are putting raw sewage into lake and river. Now, you understand that, and you saw yourself the television programme of North Dublin conducted by RTE some time ago. Now, the people, the people who are on this expert commission applied for it. Their expertise speaks for itself. The minister, the minister brought these before Cabinet. They're there to do a specific job, and that's to advise... On the, um, on the workings of Irish water, how they should go about their business in an efficient and professional manner to provide a proper service for the millions of people throughout the country who Thank haven't you, had it for years because of neglect and because of lack of investment. Thank uh, you, you have a very different view about how Irish water should be funded. Um, and obviously the, uh, the, the um, process that the Minister has put in place with the suspension of charges for nine months will allow for all of these matters to be dealt with and it will come back here eventually in terms of uh, a decision being made, 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 made by the House. Thank you, Taoiseach. That 